Good morning and welcome to our Memorial Day Assembly for Manchester Essex Regional and Middle and High School. I would like to first introduce our honored guests uh, joining us this, this morning uh, from the Manchester American Legion, uh, Ed Gavin. George Nicholas, Arthur Secker, our guest speaker, Ed Conway, Mrs. Puglisi, and Ms. Provost. Would everyone please stand as the chorus will perform our national anthem. Good morning and welcome. A special welcome goes out to the members. A special welcome goes out to the members of the class of 2018 who officially will begin senior week today and will graduate from this high school a week from today. So congratulations on a job well done. We all look forward to the week ahead. We all look forward to the week ahead of celebration and excitement and preparation for graduation. At the conclusion of the, this morning's assembly, we will meet with the senior class in the gym to discuss at length the senior week and the activities leading up to graduation. Let's hope it's a terrific week. We gather this morning as a school, school community to honor Americans who have served in our armed forces and unfortunately have given the ultimate sacrifice by being killed in mil military action, defending this country so that you and I may enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy every single day. Please stop for a moment this weekend and think about the hundreds of thousands of men and women who wore our country's uniform and were killed in the line of duty, and by doing so, ensuring that we continue to live in a democracy. This is a, this is a sacrifice like no other. We should recognize this day as it should be observed, a day that we actively remember our ancestors, our family members, our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends, who have sacrificed their lives for us. How truly grateful we are. Almost 17 years ago, on September 11, 2011, the United States was attacked for the second time in its history, attacked by an act of war that was unprovoked and cowardly. Our nation was tested in, in a way many of us had never seen before. We demonstrated to the world that our passion for freedom and liberty will never be lost in the midst of terrorists trying to ruin our way of life. In closing, please be respectful, as I know you always are, for the men and women who have died in the battlefield and elsewhere in, in the service of this country. As citizens of the United States, we have a debt we will never be able to fully repay to these fallen heroes that deserve our admiration. Thank you. At this time, the uh, chorus is going to play the hymn to freedom.
Thank you. Our feature speaker this morning is a familiar face around the halls of Manchester Essex Regional Middle and High School. Ed Conway serves as a substitute teacher as well as a middle school instructional golf program coach. Ed also runs the book for both the varsity girls and boys basketball program. Mr. Conway was born and raised in Peabody, Massachusetts, but has resided in Manchester by the Sea for the last 35 years. His two grown daughters were educated in our public schools. Mr. Conway is a graduate of, of Bishop Fenwick High School as well as Boston College. He is a United States Marine. You're never an ex-Marine, right, Ed? That's, never, that's right, never an ex-Marine. He's a United States Marine, having served in the Corps from 1966 to 1971. Mr. Conway served in the Marine Corps in the late 1960s. Mr. Conway had the honor this past uh, Veterans Day in November to be a reader of some of the names of the 58,200 and 20 fallen soldiers at the Vietnam Memorial uh, in Washington, D.C. during a uh, moving tribute to the Vietnam casualties. Please join me in welcoming Ed Conway. Thank you, Paul. Good morning, everybody. It's Memorial Day weekend. For you, all of you, a day off. But for over 500,000 families, it's a day of remembering and reflection, and that is the approximate number of American men and women lost in combat since the beginning of World War II. It's a staggering number. <clears throat> On June 5, 1945, my father boarded a C-47 aircraft with other friends and comrades somewhere in England. Their destination, small clearings in France. Their mission, secure and hold, then mark landing zones for the pending and D-Day invasion the following day. There were pathfinders from the 101st Airborne Division. On the flight over, one of my father's comrades tried to convince him to let him jump before him on their jump stick. Strict adherence to, of, would not allow this to happen. And once over the jump zone, the green light came on, and out the door they went into the night. My father never saw his friend again. He mourned his loss for his entire life this Memorial Day weekend. Fast forward 21 years, 1966, and there I am, having dropped out of college, working like many others my age, trying to find my way through the 60s. Not an easy task. The conflict in Vietnam is heating up. The draft is hovering above me, and I have a very low draft in number. I make the most logical of decisions. Instead of two years in the Army, I enlist in the Marines for four years. I never knew my father had a sense of humor, as he reminded me that my one year in college certainly didn't seem to make me any smarter after that decision. <laughs> you take an oath when you join the military, an oath to defend the Constitution <clears throat> and the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. It is serious business. You know at some point you're going to be deployed. You know you're going to be facing very long, hard, dark, and dangerous days. You also know that the loved ones you have left behind will also be facing those same long, hard, dark, and anxiety-filled days and nights, sitting at home, hoping at hope, against hope, that they will never hear that knock on the door. As the conflict moved on, the years seemed to move very slowly. More and more casualties, more knocks on the, on the door, more gold stars and more windows. In 1968 came upon us, our nation changed. We became not only a nation at arms, but a nation up in arms also. The casualties continued to grow. Our president continued to be conflicted on whether to send more troops or bring troops home. Los Angeles and Chicago burned in protest. Marvin Gaye asked everybody, what's going on? Tet Offensive, conflict came home live on television, American casualties shown live for the first time ever. 1969, Woodstock. For the few who, of, of you who did not attend, <laughs> Richie Havens, Joan Baez, Arlo Guthrie, Country Joe, Jimi Hendrix, they sang and played the anthems of their day, protest all but peaceful. 
1970, Kent State. Listen to Crosby, Stills, Nass, and Young. Questions will be answered. Last summer, I got a call, as Mr. Murphy mentioned, from a high school friend and classmate, also a veteran. He was calling me about the 35th anniversary of the rededication of the Vietnam Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. Gave us an opportunity for both of us to, get, to be, submit an application to be a reader of names. We both did, and on September 1st, I was notified that I had been chosen. I had listed a childhood name of a friend of mine who, in Abraham Lincoln's words in the, in the Gettysburg Address, had <clears throat> given the last full measure of devotion to his service. I was completely overwhelmed, and I accepted this uh, honor immediately. On our way to Washington, my family, in-laws, and family friends, we made our way over to the, or early in the day, to the wall, meeting a number of veterans along the way. I spoke with almost all that I met. We didn't know each other, but understood the brotherhood under which we served. When my time came to read, I was standing there with Cindy, my wife, and when the woman in front of me finished, she stepped back from the microphone and then returned in a very soft and slow and steady voice, said, I love you, Dad, and I miss you. I froze, shaking, and when Cindy squeezed my arm and said, don't worry about this, you've got it, and it's easy to say. She joined our family. I finished my reading, joined them along with our friends and family, and we wandered around different various monuments in the mall. And I noticed a Marine officer standing and walking slowly along the mall. I approached him, thanked him for his service, asked him if he would be reading that evening. He said he was. He was the last reader. I asked him if he would be reading a friend of mine, also a childhood friend and high school friend, and he said he would. We talked for a few minutes. He said, yes, he knew all about my friend. It's going to be a lifetime of Memorial Days for Stephen's family. I thanked him and returned to my family and friends, smile on my face, lots of days gone by. Amongst all this chaos, there was a calming voice, and I will tell you this off the cuff. He's a writer for the Boston Globe. His words were soothing. He had a way. He was a veteran. His words lifted off the page of the Globe. They were so soft, so gentle. Families who suffered loss would read and be comforted. I'll tell you this name. I'll tell you this because his name was Jeremiah Murphy. Some of you may know him as the father of your vice principal, Paul Murphy, a wonderful, wonderful man. It was a brutal generation in our nation's history. 58,220 brave souls taken from family and friends. It will continue to ask why. I know I speak for not only myself, but the veterans here and veterans worldwide, when I tell you that our wish for you is a long, happy, prosperous life without conflict. And there's that word again. And with that, our hope for you is peace. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Ed. At this time, we'd like to uh, hear some selections from our high school band under the direction of Mr. Janik. They will play America the Beautiful and Armed Forces on Parade.
Thank you, Mr. Janik. I would like to, before we close the ceremony today of the assembly, I'd like to thank Donna O'Neill uh, and Joe Janik and Betsy Vixell for providing our music along with the chorus band and the sound wave. Thank you very much. <laughs> Special thank you to the Manchester American Legion for your presence here, which always adds to this moving uh, ceremony each year. So thank you very much. I want to thank all the students and faculty for your attention and presence here, and I hope you have a wonderful uh, Memorial Day weekend. And at this time, uh, the seniors are going to stay on, in the uh, uh, gymnasium. This time, we're going to start with the middle school, if they could exit both doors. High school, please wait for a couple moments, and then we'll dismiss the high school. Thank you.